Hello everyone, and welcome to a quick guide to the new capacitor systems added to Star Citizen in the new 3.14 update. The systems are a little complex, with a lot of things to mess around with to get the best results, so I will try to simplify everything as much as possible for you. First off, let's talk about what the capacitor system actually entails. See that little triangle on your ship's displays? That's the power triangle and it allows you to variably divert power between your thrusters, weapons, and shields. While the default is to have 33% invested in each system, you can use the F5, F6, and F7 keys to cycle power towards the weapons, thrusters, and shields respectively. I know the control mappings in the game say otherwise, but just trust me. Also, the F8 key will reset your power balance back to default. Let's take a look at thrusters first. 3.14 added a new boost gauge that replaces the afterburners from previous patches. This gauge depletes when boosting your thrusters, and slowly recharges over time. Diverting power into thrusters not only increases the recharge rate of this boost gauge, but also decreases the amount of gauge consumed by continuous boost, allowing you to boost harder for longer. Please keep in mind that if the thrusters have no power, you can still fly normally, but your boost gauge will not recharge. Shields got an interesting change in 3.14. Smaller sized shields are being made into bubble shields that encase your whole ship, while larger shields retain shield facings. Just be aware that each facing only gets 25% of the shield's total capacity now. Diverting power towards your shields massively boosts the recharge rate of your shields, as well as reducing the damage they take from incoming fire. Diverting power away from your shields does not cause them to take increased damage when below the 33% default setting. However, it does significantly impact the recharge time of your shields. And of course, if you take away all power from shields, they will remain online, but they will not recharge when damaged. Weapons also received some very interesting changes in 3.14. Energy weapons now have a certain number of shots they can fire before needing to recharge. Diverting power to your weapons will not only greatly increase the recharge rate of your energy weapons, but it will also allow them to fire more shots before being fully depleted to the point of needing to recharge again. Diverting power away from weapons reduces shot capacity, and likewise slows the recharge rate. Energy weapons with no power diverted towards them will not recharge at all. An interesting thing to note, however, is that ballistic weapons are not affected in any way by power being diverted into or away from your weapons systems. Similarly, turret weapons run on their own power grid, and are also not affected by this power investment. On ships with all ballistic loadouts, or on ships with only turret guns, I recommend diverting power away from your weapon systems to increase the performance of your thrusters and shields instead. There are a lot of things you can do with this new capacitor system, and you must weigh the pros and cons of each option. I highly recommend testing out how capacitors affect your favorite ships, and how you might build your loadouts around them. Hopefully this guide was pretty easy to follow and not too complex. If you'd like to see me make more content like this, feel free to drop a like on the video, and subscribe to get notified whenever I upload. A big thank you to my Patreon supporters, including Saban and Dragon Facilier. Your support helps make videos like this possible for me. If you'd like to help support my channel, feel free to check out my Patreon, and get access to monthly giveaways, polls, and more. I'd also like to hear your thoughts on the capacitor systems. Do you like them? Dislike them? What changes would you make to them, or how have they affected your life in Star Citizen? Please let me know in the comments below, and I'll see you all in the verse.